Hey everybody, welcome to TPI LSR Live. I'm your host, True Power is Mine. Today, we're very fortunate to have one of the troops on the front line of the Corona Wars. This is Mr. Trucker, yet again back in the studio, well, at least in the quiet room, studio audience is up front. But I want to talk to Mr. Trucker because this brother is the one that brings you your toilet paper. This brother is the one that brings you your cans of beer, your, your pickles, your tomatoes, your hamburger, everything you need to live. This man and many other men and women just like him in the straight box trucks, in the 18 wheelers, in the doubles and triples, they're pushing the highway, making the money right now, right now. And I want to iterate that right now, because without these men and women, Savage Street in the streets would be at epic level. Mr. Trucker, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome, awesome. You know, I, I just want to, you know, uh, first say thank you for your service to our country. Thank you to our service, especially to our state here in Missouri. Uh, now, uh, can you just kind of give us an update? Uh, what's it looking like out there on the roads? Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to you know, thank you for your thanks, but I'm just doing what we all should be doing, you know, which is just working and living our life, you know. Uh, right now on the roads, I mean, there's less traffic than there normally is, you know, a little bit less traffic, you know. Um, trucks seem to be at the same level of traffic as before, maybe a little bit less. But, you know, um, it looks like like maybe a Christmas morning type of thing where um, – you know, like where there's there's people still out and about, but not as much as normal. Now, you know, without like giving up, you know, obviously security reason, can you tell us kind of the states you're rolling through and, and what's it looking like? Like, uh, more importantly, not just on the highway, but at the truck stops uh, in these states. And can you name the states? Yeah, I, I rode through Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Missouri, Illinois, pretty much from Pennsylvania to Dallas, you know. Gotcha. So I got Ohio, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana. Now, uh, now out there on the road, uh, like specifically at the truck stops, uh, do you notice are people still practicing social distancing, or is the people coughing over the damn donuts and pizzas? Uh, what's going on on that level? No, it's 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 you know increased the the social distancing, which is which is a word that just you know just step out and work right. Right. Um, you know, there's people who are aware and everything. The issue is is that um, okay. So as a as a driver, normally I, I I'm what I'm what you call a a team driver, and I'm over the road. So um, I'm out from you know about five days a week, five or six days a week, and so I'm home one or two days a week. And I go back out again. Uh, the issue that we're having is that when we come home to get our supplies and go back out again the next day or two days later, there's nothing in the stores. The stores aren't open even. And so we can't get stuff that we need to, to get safe, to stay safe. Like those sanitation wipes. I mean, toilet paper, you know, toilet paper, that's the stupidest thing in the world. But, um, the alcohol, the hand, stuff like that, the hand sanitizer, you know, we could really use those things out there on the road. And that's, that's the kind of stuff that we don't have. So, we wow. have to improvise, you know, we have to improvise out there. And, um, you know, typically like now, like, you know, three months ago, I'd stop two or three times out of a 11 hours, get some food, get, you know, fuel, whatever. Um, then I get to my terminal and then I, you know, we pick up our new local back out to where we were going before or something like that. Now, for the most part, I'm stopping once at the same spot every time if I can. And, Man. um, you know, so it minimizes any chance of like cat contracting anything. But the problem again is that um, you just you don't have what you need to stay safe because everybody's hoarding stuff. Now, let me ask you this question, and this is kind of off the, the 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 cuff here, but let's say that we're talking to some young men. All right, they're say um, eighteen to twenty five. All right, and. Could you talk to them about the money they can make if they become a trucker or a owner operator? Because right now, you know, uh, I believe that you're probably not sitting there wishing on a star for the one thousand two hundred dollars the government's going to give you this month or whatever. 
Like, could you kind of tell the people how much money do you make in that five day period of working on the truck? You know, without, you know, um, uh, putting any liabilities out there. Right. Well, you know, it varies. You know, when I first started, I've been driver for about 10 years. When I first started, I, I seen an ad in the paper. One of these truck driving schools, they get paid to, uh, they get paid to train you. And so, um, a buddy of mine said to take, you know, take the job and said, he told me that the next year or so, you're going to make about $40,000, $35,000, $40,000 a year. And then you get it, then the show you can pull yourself up. And I did it the first year. I made about $40,000, which, wasn't a lot of money, you know, for all the be away from home and all that stuff that I learned my trade and I progressively, you know, pulled up. Now, you know, you you can, you know, if you get to the right kind of gig, you can make anywhere between 60000 you know, and be home every night. Or if you really want to hustle hard, as a company guy, work up for uh, like an LTL, you know, like, when it, like anybody that you see, I'll just give you a little tip. Anybody that you see, driving a double or a triple truck and look at the truck if it's a, like a single cab or the guy don't have a bed in it and he's not he's probably not making as much as the guy who's driving the big truck with the sleeper in the back because those are usually team trucks usually team trucks and those guys they go on all the time and those guys make a hundred thousand on up hundred hundred fifty thousand ups uh you're those talking guys. about a 26 year old man making a hundred Something thousand dollars without a college uh, education, as long as he can pass the the training. I mean, Mark. I mean, Mark. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't have a college degree. You know, there's Bill Gates. And between the both of them, they're worth three hundred million dollars. You know, a college degree doesn't mean that you're going to guarantee your wealth. It's it's what you could do. But yeah, you know, guys out there making a hundred thousand dollars a year starting out driving the truck. You know. Wow. Um, and if you own your own truck, if you're an owner operator, you can make 300000 a year. Now, you got to make your expenses work right. And, you know, if you don't make your expenses work right, you might not come out well. But there's there's guys yeah, there's guys out there driving here consistently making 120000 140000 a year, you know. Wow. And, and, and this is over, you know, a 20-year period if you start young. You know, once again, you older folks, I'm sorry, you're out this no, game. No, actually, actually, what I'm saying is that within about – but the, if, you know, had I known what, because I had to meander into this occupation, had I known what I know now, I could be making a hundred thousand dollars in about three years. Wow, of driving, you know. But you you make you make this move, you make that move. I've also worked at trucking jobs before where I worked sixty, seventy hours a week for fifty thousand dollars a year. You know, I didn't know any better. So, well, now, but then a- on the other hand. On the other hand, there's some drivers out there who they, you know, see, I, I'm going all the time. See, my, I'm not with my family. I, you know, and like in a time like this where everybody's worried about their safety, I'm exposing myself to risk, right? You know, where everybody else is at home. They're complaining about it, but they're at home and they're relatively safe. And so, um, it, you know, there's a pull, push and pull to it, you know. You know, this is a, like another side note question, but if you, as a CDL uh, license holder, you're basically underneath the Department of Transportation as a, as an employee, believe it or not. Uh, now that we're in this, uh, I guess, war situation, has that status changed? Have you guys become FEMA agents? Well, I'm not sure because I don't sit in the boardroom, but I know that we have to adhere to the Department of Transportation. And FEMA, if they have, they, they do... I mean, I guess they could take over at times of like severe crisis at the at the president's correct, uh, direction, and they'll direct things. I'm not sure what's happening right now because all I'm basically doing is just driving, and that's it. Well, you know, I mean, and uh, once again, we're talking about financials, so this is somewhat important. But are you aware that right now that Black Rock is prepared to start participating in the money making aspect of our economy? Yeah, they've been they've been participating in it. Now, as a driver, as a a person on the front lines, just like uh, ETM or uh, fireman, police officer, nurse, everybody, do you think that your health and your wellness and the wellness of brothers and sisters and trucks all over this country is be being even considered by the higher ups? 
you think you think whether you know, you said, Wait, you think whether other people are considered our health. Yeah, I do. You think they you know, did? But at the same time, at the same time, honestly, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Well, let me ask you, you this. If, if money was not an issue and supply was not an issue, what type of PPE would you like to have on the truck? What do you mean PPE? Uh, personal protective equipment, uh, masks. Oh, um, what, what would you like yeah. to have on the truck that the company provides, not the trucker? You know, when you go out there, well, go out there to, um, you know, uh, uh, bin number 12, pick up this truck. Uh, all the PPE is already in there. If if money was right. not issue, what type of PPE would you like to see in every truck? Well, well see, the problem right now it isn't much a truck. You know, whose responsibility it is it's a matter of, of just logistics. You know, when when I go home every weekend, I I can't go to now. Especially, you, you can't just go to Walmart and get what you need safe wise. You know, for for hygiene. Or, I mean, for for safety, like the cameras and stuff like that. It's not available, and so. You know, where you would say, well, it's, it's the driver's responsibility to have these things, to have these things, you know, on, on hand. And it is. We, we have, we've had them. My partner and I, we usually have sanitation wipes. We normally have Lysol and all that kind of stuff just on general, just to keep the truck clean. But we've had them for the last month, up until the last month, but we can't get them replaced because there's people out there who's got 10 year supply of toilet paper in their basement, mm. you know. And consumers and they they hoard everything and if it comes out, you know they're at home and they go to the store every day and they get this stuff. And then when I come home once or twice a week, there's nothing available. So the truck company is not a, is not responsible for that. But in reality, we can't get it. So what's going to happen ultimately, I'm afraid, is that people, other drivers, you know, they're going to end up contracting this probably at a very high rate because you know we're just okay. we are front we just don't have the ability to stay as safe as possible we try to do the best we can but you know the reality will set in at some point uh now on the other hand you know let's say if this thing stretches into july or august um by june or august by june, july you know everybody's going to step up to the plate and everybody's going to have you know they're going to have what they need and things are going to come out you know every every problem like this is going to be solved but june is too much from now i mean you know, but why would we wait till month. june to solve the problem you know, why, why would we have to wait so long i mean because for one reason why i say the 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 actual hub or the company should be providing the ppe for one reason typically they are have access to the warehouse that holds the ppe before it gets distributed so if they can get first right. dibs for the truckers that would be golden well, you're asking why, you know, why aren't these problems solved? Well, you know, that's the nature of problems, you know, is that, you know, in a situation like this, everything is a problem. You know, there's problems that have come up that we never thought were going to be a problem. They're now big problems. And it just takes a while to get these, you know, seemingly simple problems solved. It's just, that's just the way of life. And that's what we really have to buck up to the fucking bat. I mean, right now the country's at bat. We got a lot of people running around here saying, oh, this is from God. This is beautiful. It's horrible. It's horrible when something's out there killing citizens and, and, and people, just human beings in general, indiscriminately. And that's what's going well, on. You know, you know what's killed more people in history? Uh, wars? Things. Nope. Water and air. You know, life is about death. And, and you know, the thing is, this, this thing here is a plague. But it's not new. It's not. It's not unique. And this ain't gonna be the last time this happens. It's a pandemic, and so it's just maybe it is God's way of telling us that um, we're not so big. We're not so technologically advanced. That something like this ain't gonna happen. You know, this is a reminder. You know, and this is terrible, terrible thing. You know, but it's not the end of the world. This is not gonna wipe us out. Well, we. What I think that we gotta watch out for is the power grab. You know, we got to watch for this manipulation that's happened, all this hysteria that's happening, people losing their freaking mind over toilet paper. Come on. Well, toilet paper is the only thing that you want to buy. You know, at this point, toilet paper? Well, you know? let me, I mean, let me not, explain it to you. Hmm. The average American does not know how to wipe their ass without toilet paper. So that's why that's such an issue. And then a lot of the right. women out there who are poor, they didn't stock up on pads or tampons. They're getting wads of toilet paper and shoving it up their hoo-hahs 
just to, well, you know, not make a bloody change, mess. You know, I would say they should Google or maybe watch a YouTube video of how to wipe your ass. Because hoarding toilet paper is stupid, and it's panic driven. You know, you know what? It's interesting. Let me how did how did this toilet paper hysteria start? Do you know? I, I'm assuming like the Popeyes chicken. It was marketing. It was it was marketing, right? You know when that happened? Approximately when it happened? Oh um, no, I wasn't really following this too deeply. Okay. All right. So if you look and you start doing any, you, you better start doing your research quickly because these, these little threads are start disappearing. Curiously enough, um, so this panic happened. This this this, this pandemic, or whatever, has as far as we know, it's been going on since like late December in China, right? Although there's some people said that they were sick in America before that time, but what we know is that the uh, the Chinese you know, pandemic started in, in in December and it became like. Okay. Became it, it started hitting the public's eye uh, in early January, right? And we didn't really pay attention to it because there was impeachment and stuff like that. Right. So by February, we started seeing it spread into Europe, and we're like, "Oh boy, Europe has a problem." We didn't realize it was here. Probably is already here, you know. Well, you know, it wasn't really a big deal. Still worried about impeachment and trying to get rid of Trump and all that stuff. In early March, still wasn't talking about toilet paper, right? Right. The first post that I found. Was a post on my line. A friend posted something on uh, March 10th, right? Basically, right. in the post, just simple post. Now, nobody was fran frantic at this point. Nobody was upset. And it said, um, in Australia, people are starting to hoard toilet paper. And this is just as, as a post, just a simple post. And it says, it, it's getting so bad in Australia, the toilet paper shortage, that Chinese newspapers that own most of the news, not Chinese. You know, uh, Chinese, the Chinese that own most of the newspapers in Australia, they were printing extra copies of blank paper in the newspaper so people could wipe their butt with because there's no toilet paper around. Now, it's just a simple post, almost a funny post, right? But that was, actually, it was uh, March 5th, I believe. Now, that was in the middle of the week, right? On yeah. March on March 10th, I started seeing my first hysterical post from people who were basically saying, people in America were saying, you know, oh my God, there's no toilet paper, right? Right. And then all of a sudden, more people started popping up and more people, and what I think happened is there's there's three groups of people in, in America. There's, well, maybe four. There's the preppers, first of all, the people who actually already got the stuff hammered, and they already knew the stuff was coming, and they didn't have to run out to get guns and get toilet paper. They already got their stock. Right. They're waiting for it. When it comes, they're like, honey, this is it. Let's get to the bunker and prepare to defend. That's number one. Number two are the people who don't do a thing, but they read. And then they see something. somebody somebody heckles and somebody posts out there, call it for emperor is a shortage. And then they react. They super react. And then they run to the store for no reason. They buy up five cards of freaking toilet paper. Mm. You know what I mean? And then they run out of the store with it. Okay, and then there's a third group of people who are like, man, toilet paper, certainly there's more toilet paper. They go to the store, and they see three or four rolls of toilet paper there, and that's it. And they, oh, my God, it is true. <laughs> they, and, they, and they take whatever's left, even though they don't, they don't even need toilet paper. And then they got the final group, the people like you and me who are kind of like, come on, guys, surely there's toilet paper. You guys are overreacting. You go to the store, and you see no toilet paper whatsoever. Right. Suddenly, toilet paper's at the top of your list. It's not in my... That's just a matter of being manipulated. And that's what's happening. Now, toilet paper's stupid. I think if anybody's really, you know, like the invisible hand, they're watching and they're they're using toilet paper as a judge. As long as... The, and they can... See, you can judge. You can see if the toilet paper is in stock or not. You can you could probably see that in real time. You can see by the demand. Right. And as long as that toilet paper demand is up, and as long as the supply is down, then you know that the panic level is up. Now, when that starts to dwindle, they have to ramp it back up again. they got to put something in the news, you know. Now, what is this all about? I don't know. But let me ask you another question. What was the big story right before right before this thing became a big historical event? What was the big thing in the news? Do you remember? In, the, in American yeah, news? Yeah, it was the impeachment. Nope. It was Super Tuesday. Impeachment was over... By, first of all, impeachment was never going to be a thing in the first place. Everybody was real people who were really looking at this thing was thinking, okay, yeah, the, you know, the House is controlled.
controlled by the Democrats, they could vote for impeachment. It's a purely political event, part of partisan lines. Nobody crossed the line. Well, maybe one or two people did, but it was very political. They knew that he wasn't going to be removed. Why would you impeach a president who's up for re-election anyway? It's freaking stupid. Why would you impeach a person who's already on his way out? Or, you know, if, well, if you don't like the money. Out? People make money. All the people uh, who were putting all the little reports together were getting paid good money. It was a distraction, is what it was. Yes. The big story was right before, week before this thing became hysterical, this coronavirus thing, the big story was Super Tuesday. Because remember, the Democrats had the crowd of film. They had... <laughs> You know, a dozen, twenty people in the field, and all of them were vying to be to be the president. On the and Democratic. all of them were scumbags. They had no. Well, not, they're, they're, I, I'm not going to say they are. Somebody, somebody voted for them. You know, mm -hmm. but the thing is, right before Super Tuesday, okay? Do you remember Joe Biden's position on the first day on, on the uh, Iowa and the New Hampshire primaries? You remember his position? You remember who won those two primaries? Mm. The judge won Iowa in a contested race. It really was Bernie Sanders' race. And then Bernie Sanders won uh, New Hampshire. Bernie Sanders was taking a victory lap up until up until Super Tuesday. And he had Elizabeth Warren. She was in there. Klobuchar was in there. Booty Judge was in there. And they were all trying to be the president. Biden was in there. Biden was like fifth on the list. Well, yeah. You know, you had, you had uh, Bloomberg. Okay, and then right before Super Tuesday, Klobuchar dropped out. Booty Judge dropped out. Warren dropped out. Um... Uh, Booker was already out. Kamal Harris is all the way out. You know, all of them were, were, were pointing to Biden and endorsing him. And Biden was out of the race. And Patrick Biden took Super Tuesday. They all, and basically what happened was it was a jack move. And they tossed it all to Biden. And they said Biden's going to be our nominee. Okay. And then everybody saw, so all of a sudden there was no, you know, although no Sanders is still in there, Sanders is still basically saying, what the hell just happened? But he's still in the race, but he, he's not going to go anywhere. You know, so all of a sudden, that. when all this stuff happened, the coronavirus, the Democratic race was already decided. It was already decided. So, could you imagine how, how chaotic it would be if they were still trying to run a primary right now? Well, who do you now, think that Biden questions. will choose for his VP? Well, probably what he said. A black. He said he's going to choose a black. A oh, black. a black. Well, oh, you mean, oh, you mean actual name? <laughs> no, he's just going to choose a black. He's going to choose a Hispanic, or he's going to choose somebody who's of color, who's a woman. That's what he said. Oh, who's so that? I don't know. Camilla Harris could be coming back in Spain. Well, is she is she really black? You know, is She's she African American brown. black? You know, during Super Tuesday, he said to get the, the black vote. He said he's going to he, he's considering uh, a, a black uh, female candidate. Now he kind of backing off of that a little bit. He's looking at the. Um, uh, you watch. He'll probably come out with some chick like Candace Owens. He ain't gonna come out with Candace Owens. <laughs> oh you know, yeah, that's he right. Might he might come out. He might invent somebody, but he ain't gonna come up with her. Nah, he's gonna. He's gonna be. You know, he's gonna be very. Um, what do you call it? Where um, it's gonna be partisan, part, or you know, uh, identity politics, and he's gonna pick. But Joe's an chicks. old racist, though. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna say it because people need to hear this and truly understand. Joe Biden is the guy that said, if my grandmother gets hit with a, a lead fucking pipe being wielded by a black super predator at the time, you know, it's up to him to defend her. And that's why he signed the bill that put so many men and women of color behind bars back in the 90s. Joe is not your well, I, I say something really honestly. It wasn't, the, it wasn't him to put those people on Joe. They, the guy hit the old lady with the pipe, they put themselves in jail. You know? But, I mean, what he said, I don't, I don't remember the statement, but if he said it, maybe he said it wrong. I don't know. But we got to call it right, you know? Black folks don't, we aren't put in jail by the, by the law. I mean, not by a maliciously racist law. We're put in jail because we tend to be violent. Maybe well, we should stop doing that. I you know? had a guest on my show. Sister Dorothy Gaines, and she was incarcerated behind racial lines, and it took a great deal of effort by blacks and whites to get her out, more so black. The thing is, there is a racial component when we talk about these issues. Okay. All right. If it's racial, how come how come uh, the Chinese people are complaining? How come the Indians are complaining? Oh, because why, they have their no, honorary the they have their honorary white card. Now, a lot of oh, okay. So it's not really racist. It's just against blacks. So it's not. It's not really against 
racial thing. It's just everybody against black people, right? Everybody that, that is racial. People. That would be racial if everyone okay. is targeting people just because of their. But they're not race. targeting people. They're only targeting black people. Yeah, right? well, that's a people, so that would be racist. Okay. okay. Then maybe you shouldn't be black. Maybe you should be something else. Well, they do got skin creams that can fix that. But no, no, I'm not you, saying no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying you. Why, why would you have to change your color? I mean, you nowadays, if you could change your if you could change your gender just because you say you're another gender, why can't you just say well, I'm not black? It's problem solved. You know, right? in a non racist world, that would actually is, work. And the answer is we live in a racist world, it will not well, work. Well, okay. Well, as long as you get to be racist, then you get to have the amenities that come along with being that victim status. Because exactly. then you get to then you get to be a victim and then you get to do whatever you want to and then you get to say, Well, well I can't be a racist because I'm a victim. No, no, no. no. I disagree with it. I, I what I think is that as a society, blacks tend to be more violent. Look at our culture. If you want to change the result of it, change the culture. If you don't want to change the culture, live with the result of it. Now, how can the culture be really your culture when there is external forces driving what the quote-unquote culture? I mean, look at Easy e Who was behind Easy e It was a Jewish old man. Let's look at our music. Let's look at our music. Is our music governed by some outside side force? Yes. It's called the record okay. label. It's called the man oh, okay. that can put you on this stage. The man that can right. take you okay. from city to city. So, so and it's always label, a the small label, sombrero. The record label, the record label gets, gets to decide all that stuff. Okay. And you're giving them a lot of power then. That yeah. means that... Th- you th- know so that if, back if, in the if, 90s, they so much, the average, if they got so much power, if they got so much power, why, 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 why cry to that power for change then? If they're so racist and they got so much power, then fuck it. Why cry about it? Because there's nothing you could do in a racist society that's got all the power to change anything anyway. You never. I mean, do you think that it's Kuta Kente? You think all his crime? You think that would have done any good when it truly was racist? That's funny that you mentioned no. Kuta Kente. We all know that that book was fake. It wasn't. That, that was actually. plagiarized. It, Roots it was, was plagiarized. It was the it the was dude fiction. that wrote that did not even get that. He pulled it from other sources. But the thing well, about it is, it all plays back to as long as you're harming or hurting black folks, you're going to get paid. Well, Whether you know, what it comes down to. What it comes down to as a black person or whatever you want to describe yourself as, if you want to be a foolish person and, and say that you have no power, then you will live with that thing. I choose not to. I choose to say that, well, I don't have all the power and prestige as a Bill Gates or even as a Donald Trump, that I, I am not a victim and that I do have my own, my own wealth and my own rights. There are things that I can do that I should be able to do. And but like, but like right now, she'll be showing you just how much rights you got. If you had a job that wasn't categorized as being important, you would be just like all the other slaves. Go no, into no, your no, shanty no, but, and be hey, quiet. Man, check this out. Check this out. Do you, do you know that some people actually save money for days like this? Do you know that not everybody lives paycheck to paycheck? That is and true. So like, so like when things like this actually happen, you're not running out of desperation. You might be running out of safety. You know, there's things that happen that are of a magnitude where, like, heaven forbid, a natural disaster, heaven forbid, a, one of these gigantic earthquakes that just, just destroys, or a hurricane or something like that. Well, that's a different kind of story, flooding, you know? Right. But this right here, this is a disruption that will bring upon a, a cataclysmic economic downturn, which will affect you. But it hasn't affected us yet. But, you know, being out of work is because of two things. Number one, it's a political thing going on. And then number two, you got to look at this thing for its real, you know, for its reality, and say that there's something very, very fishy about this whole thing. First of all, That's number fine. one, the media, the media is disingenuous. They, they've been caught at once. We know that they're not news. We know that they're propagandized. They got a prop, they got a gendized propaganda campaign going on. They want to, they want to, they want to um, disavow Trump to hurt him politically. This is the media, but in general, the mainstream media. Take your pop, top top one hundred. Probably 95 of them are slanted against him. Why? It's curious. Why? Well, our organization is racist. Okay, well, you want to call everything racist? Everything is racist? Okay. Listen to this. You talk about Ice Cube, talk about NWA. Listen to, listen to some of the NWA. Is that racist? Of course. It was racist okay, then, designed then, by a then, small then, sombrero. But, but we're quoting them, though, at the same time, as our savior. They're not our savior. Yeah. NWA has done more against black people than any other entity in the last 50 years. You're talking about character assassinating us. I'm, us talking about cultural, I'm talking about cultural assassination. You won't put words in my mouth. 
I'm mm. talking about cultural, because there's no character in cultural. There's no there's no one figure I'm talking about. I'm talking about the whole, if you want to call it black culture. They've taken what should have come. I mean, just listen to the music. I, I, I query you one day to sit down and, and Google or go to Pandora and listen to, I don't know, 15 minutes of Motown uh, in the early 60s. You know, listen to some of the music that was coming out at that point. Now, listen to jazz, the, where, where they were really coming out of truly racist society. And listen, listen to the optimism and the sadness, but listen to the optimism and the grandeur in that music, and then fast forward to the 1980s and listen to that stuff. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it back then. Maybe not the, the lyrics, but I loved the music. Where they, they hit the times oh, us. And they, they convinced us to basically to give up our common sense for their sense. No, for foolishness. For foolishness. Well, for their sense. Well, and they were, they were truly selling us out. You know, let, let, listen to Ice Cube talk about, I never had dinner with the president. I never had dinner with the president. But that fool had dinner with the president. <laughs> <laughs> or live way out. That dude lives way out. You know? Watch that movie Eight Mile, right? That eight mile, when, you know, with Eminem, right? You know, the so-called white Negro, right? So when, when that final scene, when he beat Clarence, who did think who, who do you think he was talking about? Clarence, you know, talking with Eminem in the eight mile when he's talking about, well, um, your 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 mom and dad have, you know, you have real good parents, basically. Who keep talking about Ice Cube? Mm. You know, Ice Cube was that guy, Clarence. But you look at him, and he, and I'm not just blaming on Ice Cube. Ice Cube's my boy, lyrically. I mean, he's, you know, he's all that. But I'm saying, we can't be stupid about this thing. You got to be smart. Take in all the information you can. Make up your own mind. But there's something going on right here. This virus, this old thing, there's people dying. Oh, just be, more people die of abortion than of uh, abortion. Uh, it's Please, you know. Well, we I mean, talk people, about that on this show. Uh, this goes back to the whole culture of death which you find yourself immersed in. You forsake the young, then you forsake the old, and then you just pick through the the um, middle-age adults to see who's really capable of work and who's useless eaters. Well, it's, well this, this is, is my contention. My, this is my contention. I love this from my mother. I don't subscribe to the they mentality. Well, they do, they, they do, they do. I, I, I subscribe to the me and we. You know, I, re- I refuse to allow the so-called they run the world. Now, I can vote for somebody. I can let them represent me. This is our society. But I'm not going to bow down to they. You know, like right now, well, you got to sit in your house. Okay, now I understand the health issue. But there's something going on right now. There's something that has not been really been told. There's something fishy about this thing. A month ago, almost to the day, we're talking about our, our first one or two or three cases in the, in, in the United States. Our first one or two cases up there in Washington when that, when that nursing home had 12 or 13 people die or they got sick on the set, right? Mm-hmm. Within a month's time, we got a half a million, a quarter of a million people infected. How the fuck? Are you serious? <laughs> How does that happen? Well, it goes back to logistics once again. Now, you know, I'm the Chinese worker that you don't give a fuck about. I'm okay. hacking and coughing over those fucking phones. You're just craving over those right. particles are being implanted on that fucking right. well, So let me ask you a question. You're, you're saying it's implanted in, in the in the shipments coming in. So what the hell does the sequester in yourself in your house? How is that going to fix anything? Because, because it gives more to power to the government. Okay, so why, so why, so why acquiesce to that? Why, why submit yourself to that? Uh, because you don't want to end up on. Listen, well, but, we're back to either you're with us or you're against us. Okay, nah, we're back. We're back to. We're back to common sense. We're act, we're actually at, back to making your own mind up rather mm. than giving it up to somebody else who says, "Well, you're going to stay in your house for three months." The fuck I am. I'm not going to do that. I'm you have to bow do down. To this I'm not going to do it. And, then, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. and you say, "Well, uh, millions of people are going to die." That's a, that's fear mongering. Yeah. Well, we know that shit's not true. And even if it is true, if we go into a Great Depression, the next Great Depression is going to make the first one look like a panic. It's going to make it look like just a little hiccup. Look at all the unemployment numbers off the freaking chart. You know, you can't do that shit. So I'm not going to do it. Really, you're going to you know. This is my contention: is if you're sick, ill, or if you feel that you're sick or ill, sequester your ass in your house. And we will, we will, we'll create a whole new 
a whole new industry of people who are going to cater to you, deliver food to you, cut your grass, clean your gutters, do whatever the fuck we got to do to keep you safe and healthy. But I'm going back to work. But the problem is there's asymptomatic people who can transmit this thing. That, who are they going to transmit it to if the people who are the most vulnerable are in their freaking house? Uh, they're they sequestering had... healthy people. And, you know, there's, there's, there's asymptoms that aren't going to go away until they get a cure for this thing. So what, are we going to set ourselves in our house for 18 months? Well, hell, you might as well give the keys to the country to somebody else then. And I'm not it already has been given to someone no, else. No, 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 no. It's already been given it's by some people. The process has started, no doubt about it, but that's, it ain't done yet. Otherwise, this shit would have never happened. You know, somebody said something interesting to me. They said, um, this never would have happened if Obama was president. I'm telling you what I'm wondering. And I thought about it for a second. I said, you know what? You're probably right, but listen to that statement and analyze it. Seriously. You better analyze it for us because my audience is going to be, what the fuck? No. Analyze well, that for Okay, us. well, let, let me analyze it then. Okay? Let's say that this stuff never would have happened if Obama was president. Why? Why would it have never happened? This was a virus that, that was created either in a lab or by someone else's direction. So if it never would have happened, if it was created by somebody else, that meant that whoever created it would want Obama to have been the president or to have been in charge. This was created to create havoc on the And we talk about Russia, Russia, Russia in 2016. You mean that this shit ain't affecting our election? Uh -huh. Now, but the thing is, it's going to backfire. Now, this is what I'm worried about. This shit is going to pass because this is a virus and it's a bad virus, but this is not the doomsday virus. Now, yeah. Patrick, this is a fact, too. We've gone through epidemics before we lost our freaking head. We, we've forgotten the Bible. There's been plagues all throughout human history, and they will, continue, they will continue to be. Age itself is a plague. It has not wiped us out. The epidemic in 1918, as bad as it was, it didn't wipe us out. Right. It did not wipe us out, and it didn't destroy our economy. You know, it, the bubonic plague knocked out 90% of freaking London. It didn't destroy them. It didn't wipe them out. What it actually did was it made the people who lived stronger. And I don't want anybody to die needlessly. I have a family. I don't want them to die. Right. But every time every time they get in a car and they leave the house, I wonder about them. Every time they get on the plane. Every time they open up the, the stove and turn it on, I worry about shit. Death is all around us. You know? But what I'm afraid of is when the invisible hand realizes that this didn't sink. Trump. Let me think about the etymology. Think, think about the timeline. Trump declares candidacy in 2015. He's immediately branded a racist. Okay. But it didn't condemn his candidacy. And then he gets elected. And then before he even takes office, they're talking about trying to nullify the electoral vote. Okay? And then he gets not, he gets he gets inaugurated and then they start talking about impeachment immediately. All throughout there's been a drum beat against this dude, right? And then they do this Mueller investigation. Rush, 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 get and find a damn thing. Mueller himself gets up to testify, we find out he's a bumbling idiot. It's on testimony, it's on tape. As soon as that gets shut down, then you have this Ukrainian thing come up, and then you got an actual impeachment start. Try to get this man. That goes down in flames. And then it's right on its heels comes this shit. And this shit ain't expensive. If this shit is not curious to somebody, then you're a fool. It's a curious shit. I don't know what happened, but I, I'm not a fool. You know? I'm not a fool. There's this thing in reasoning called abductive reasoning, right? Like you got inductive reasoning, you got, abductive, you got inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning. Abductive reasoning is another form of reasoning. And in abductive reasoning, you gather facts, basically. And you just gather facts. You don't even know there's a crime. You know, like where deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning is, is used to, to determine the, the crime and who, who was the, the suspect and everything. And abductive reasoning... Basically, just collect facts, and then all of a sudden, at some point, it just hits you. Uh, you know, in police work, they call it a hunch. They call it, some people call it women's intuition. Some people call it ESP. But basically, what it is is you gather all these facts independent of any investigation. You're just a layman, and then all of a sudden, it just freaking hits you. At least, maybe not the actual truth, but it gives you you can infer another clue where you don't see one. And like right now, there's the obvious push for globalism, the obvious push for it. Oh, yeah. You look at what's happening in the EU, look what's happening in, in Europe, you look in, in England, look what's happening in, in uh, Israel, or in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia, in Canada. You got all these facts, and you got, look at what's happening at our southern border, and our northern border. You know, 
all this push to break down our borders. You look at what's happening in the, in the UN, which is a criminal, you know, they're, they're an anti-American organization within America. You know? That is true. And all these things happen, and what's happening to our society and our economy in the last month is exactly what they, somebody, you know, certainly is in favor of, you know, it doesn't benefit us to do this stuff. You know, so give it another two or three weeks. Take your vacation. What I would say is this: you talk about it as a driver. Is okay. So we take a month off right now in the middle of in the middle of, of, of springtime. I think that we should just throw our middle finger up to these thick and invisible hand people and say this: every year from this point on, we're going to take a week off in the springtime. Now, not spring break, maybe two weeks off. We're going to shut down everybody except for essential people and pay them double. Mm. We're going to shut down every freaking every two weeks in in late March. We're going to shut down just for the fuck of it, just to say we're going to shut everything down, just to say you you are not going to break us. And then, if for heaven forbid, there's another true epidemic or a pandemic again, we're already shutting down for two weeks. We'll shut down two more weeks after that, then we're opening the fuck up and taking our chances. Now, what about people who are working in the fulfillment arena? They're the ones putting boxes and boxes to mail out to people. You think that they should have a right to strike right now for PPE? Sure. Yeah, they could strike. Yeah. Yeah, you could strike. Now, you know, if that was to happen, as a why trucker, would you? Why would you? Why would that be a good idea? <laughs> you know, why would that be a stupid idea? You know, what's good and what's bad about it? No, I. I'm, you know, right at that moment. That, you, that you're the most needed. You're, that'd be like as a police officer, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to choose that moment during 911 to say, you know what? We got this contract on the table, guys. I don't think we're going to go to this emergency call until we get this thing hammered out. And then when we get it hammered out, we're going to have a celebration. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry those people and keep on stepping, you know? Somebody wants to work. So do you, you think know? that the republic ideal of the, the nation is in jeopardy right now? What's that? The Republic ideal that every citizen is entitled to privileges and rights. Oh, no, that's Republic. I thought Republic ideal would be that we have a delegatory uh, process where we elect people who are going to represent us. I mean, But we yeah, also sure have a, a textual laws determining that those people that we elect cannot infringe on privileges that all citizens should enjoy under the Constitution of the Republic. Like, in other words, it's okay for you to go down to your hub and meet other truckers and then roll out, but it's not okay for people to go into the house of the Lord and worship right now, unless they're six feet apart. Well, there's there's actually, um, there's a campaign on board to help out these churches. You know, somebody said, again, you know, um, a friend of mine, you know, talking about Easter, saying this is the first time in history we, we're not going to celebrate Easter. I beg the differ. We're going to celebrate Easter. Maybe we can't do it face-to-face because of the health issues or whatever. And so there's there's people who are creating websites that are going to allow ministers to upload their videos to these websites to let their parishioners or anyone who's just interested to click on and to look at the sermon for your favorite minister during during church time. And if you want to, if you want to, um, if you want to donate, you know, if you want to, you know, give a collection or whatever, you can do it online. You know, there's an old word that, um, that's, it's a Latin word, right? It's called sacellum, sacellum, S-A-C-E-L-L-U-M, sacellum. And what it means is a church without a roof. It's like a private sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're going to evolve into, at least this year, where people of faith are still going to celebrate. But they're not going to celebrate in this big cathedral that we've been doing. And maybe that's a good thing. Well, they're let me ask you this question. Themselves. You know, you roll into your hub, you're greeted by HR, and they're like saying, you know, come here. We need to talk to you for a second. You got to sign these papers, boom, boom, boom. And then we have to inject this microchip that will give you real-time health analysis over your body boom will you accept that or will you leave your well, that's a hypothetical you know I, I it's hard to answer a hypothetical you know uh, you know but I, you could probably guess what i would say yeah yeah you know the, the thing is that's where we're moving to 
with that type of concept that no, we I don't, don't have to fellowship. We don't have to come together. You know, I don't, don't know. forget. I don't know if we're moving to it or not, but I know that is the the more that we sit back and just say, okay, okay, uh, okay, and the more that we 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 could do common sense and common rights, then the closer we get. But the more that we reject stuff, we say, well, you know what? We will allow a few a few weeks or a month or so of this. Well, you know, that's where and we're the people, at. And the people who, no, we're not quite there yet, but the people who basically say, well, what about the people who are ill? Let them stay in their homes. Yes. But what about the people, you know, once, once we should all once, stay in the home because, we should all stay in our homes because everybody's 80 years old or, or on dialysis. And that's a shame. I don't want that. I don't wish that on anybody, but we should not condemn our economy for this. There's going to have, that cure is going to be worse than its, than its condition. You know, but I'm just having, saying having the rec- that, having, having that mindset rec- with the, the conservatives and that showing their their love of money versus their love of life. That being who, who open, don't have a love who who don't the only conservatives have got a love of money. It's a common sense thing. I mean, you don't have to be a conservative to realize that you need a job in this society. You don't have to be a conservative to realize that you need an income, that you need a supply line. We all realize that now. Let you and you mentioned it yourself, Aaron. Hey, let our supply line break down. You don't have to be a Republican or to be a conservative to realize that you need to protect that. You know, that that is an essential part of your being. Now, honestly, 200 years ago, there were there were epidemics then too. Smallpox, scarlet fever, you know, um, tuberculosis. Those were all plagues. And they killed greater percentages than this stuff. It didn't shut the economy down because everybody knew how to plant and farm. And they could they could sequester themselves on the farm and do just fine. You know, you most people can't grow shit when they're sitting on the toilet, you know, or so, when they're sitting in a high rise without land to grow shit on. I know I, I know people who live in the suburbs who would starve to death if they can't go to the market. You know, of course. So so it's not a it's not a conservative thing to see this stuff. You know, and it's, you know, just because you're conservative don't mean that you don't enjoy people and, and have, you know, have a love of them. Well, when you, you know, say statements stuff. like, you know, you should be willing to die, you know, to, to protect the economy and the flow of commerce. And because let's face it, the economy is is a beast that only produce one or two outcomes, a creditor or a debtor. And in okay. this economy, the debtor boat is way more bigger than the creditor boat. Well, I don't know about that. But the thing about it is when you say you're willing to die, okay, you take it out of context. The people who are working right now to keep the supply of chain going, those and the people who are working in the hospitals, the people who work in the law enforcement, even the people who are delivering your food, you know what I mean? Those people are essential. And they're putting themselves at risk, right? They're putting themselves at risk. Now, remove them and you, you can count your days. You can count your days on one hand of how long it will be before you have chaos in the streets. And it won't say, really be well, chaos because these people are going to try to, to scavenge shit and then there's nothing to be scavenged. That's the beauty of this thing. Oh, oh, oh I beg to differ. Not that it be scavenged, maybe not in the stores, but you have food in your house, right? Look uh, outside of the box. You're going to have to get through the armed mail at that house to get to that food. Then so. you know what? That's, that's where the chaos is going to happen. You, you see, you don't realize that there's you look at some countries, that's exactly what they would do. And if they died doing that, then that would be somebody willing to die with it for their cause. Mm. See, the thing is, if you, if you want to develop a mentality that, well, conservatives, they only worship the money, that's simplistic in its approach. Because most people have pappies and grandpappies and great-grandpappies who, are, who would be considered conservative today. The root of conservatism just basically means to save a little bit of your labor for this rainy day. And this is a rainy day right now. Well, the people who actually are surviving without rushing to the store are those who thought about the rainy day. It's not a political thing. It's a financial thing, you know? So but looking see, that at goes it back, when you say financial thing, that goes back to economic viability. And uh, if you're in a system where education. you're not economically viable before a uh, catastrophe uh, or... How come, how, come, how come one's not economically viable in 2020? Well, that's a good Is it because, question. Because of slavery, because of slavery, right? Uh, because of the lack of resources handed down by those who went through slavery, handed down, handed down through slavery. Okay, so right. So no, I mean, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of inheritance would a son or daughter of a slave receive? Okay. Well, how 
how long ago was slavery? How long ago was Jim Crow? Well, no, we were talking about slavery. Right? But we're, we're talking, just, about, no, we're Jim talking about Jim Crow as well. Because now that we're was talking the about aftermath. Jim Crow. Okay. All right. Okay, so Jim Crow, let's say, let's say 1990, right? Okay. Okay, so 1990. How long ago was 1990? Almost 30 years ago. Okay. So the average person that you're talking to about in the workplace, how old are they? They should be in their 20s. Okay. Well, the average person, 20 or 30, right? So those people, have they been affected by Jim Crow? Have Jim Crow ended 30 years ago? Yes. Well, no, but they wouldn't hear no, it. Yes, from... yes, they so have. You, yes, yes, they have. Because, because the ones who were not affected happy. by Jim Crow could give them all resources when their grandma and grandpa died. And those okay. grandma and grandpas that were under Jim Crow did not have shit to give those right. uh-huh. that right. they had. So how come you got people in the same family given the same resources and one takes advantage? Oh, yeah, because there are people out there that can take on mentors. White men and women who have resources because grandma and grandpa gave it to them can actually pick up the downtrodden and mentor okay. them. And put so, them so, in place. So, so like those easy who started out, them, so those who started out with umbrella. nothing, so those who started out with nothing, and ends up with something, is only because somebody picked up those downsides. Basically, yes. They you cannot name me huh? one huh? melanated person in the United States that did not have a white hand in their no economic okay. success. Well, if that's the case, then if that's the reality, then it's a very sad reality. For of you, course, then. because well, then then there's no point. Why why protest? Why struggle? But what you're saying. It's a, it's a foregone conclusion that there's no reality of it. So I don't blame the gangbangers in the street if that's what they believe. I don't believe it. But if that's what they believe, then that's the reality. I'm not going to be them. I'm going to change my designation. And I'm not going to be whatever they are. I'm going to call myself something different because I'm not them. I don't believe in them. I'm going to separate myself right now from them. I'll put it on tape. But see, that's, I don't you know, that's a problem, though. With no, this, it's not, as, it's as not as a problem for me. It's not a problem. It, you it's can't not a determine problem. whether you're going to participate it's or not. It's not a problem You have to me. participate. It's not a problem for me because I'm not a victim. And I'm not going to I'm not gonna condemn myself or my family to victimhood just to placate a reality that says 150 years ago, my parents, our parents, maybe, maybe not. For all you know, your parents might have been slave owners because there were a few slave owners who were black. Of course. And, you know, no so, one wants to talk but, about but, that but, ugly but reality. Good, but and yeah. that's all good. And you might have inherited something anyway. And there's a lot of white people who didn't inherit a damn thing. You still managed to get up. Education is key. So, so if, you don't value, if you don't value education... So George Washington and them... Uh, fought the Revolutionary War so that they can have education, or did they fight it for liberty? Well, you're changing the subject. So we're talking about liberty versus No, no, education. we're talking about liberty when we're comparing it to human experience. It's all the same, whether you're white, black, whatever. But you got to understand the people who found this nation did not found the nation to have the right to education. They found the nations to have rights and privileges that were inalienable by God. Right. Okay. All right. I, I buy that. You know, but my thing is, if if you say, well, I can't do it because the white man's got his boot on my back, and you're going to hold on to that, then I, I can't change that, and I don't have the energy to try. I'll just say, well, good luck. You know, because what I see in that mentality is no hope and no future. Okay. Because the people who we're crying to are the very same people that we're saying have all the power, and no ambition to help us in the first place. And so if that's the case, then Martin Luther King fell, the Civil Rights Movement fell, anybody who taught you in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s to overcome and to, we're not asking for a handout, just a hand, they fell. The NAACP failed. And if they fell off for all that long period of time, then fuck it. Why should I listen to them? They've been doing nothing but failing. I'm going to go out on my own, and I'm going to I'm going to work. Now you talk about you talk about resources. Well, my grandpappy didn't give me anything, so why don't you create something and leave it to your kids? Well, cake, my grandpappy didn't. Well, the, <laughs> then do it. Well, it's not that hard to create. Let me tell you a couple of different, you know, just simple steps. Get an education if you can, but if you don't have an education, get a practical education and a vocation. There's a lot of people, some of the smartest people I know can build houses where the smartest people who got education, quote unquote, can't build a house, can't do their plumbing, can't do their roof. Got to gotta get the uneducated people to do it for them, right? Right. Have, having, a college, as a, having a college degree doesn't guarantee you a thing. Look at who's working now. It's the people without college degrees, right? You know, get yourself, a, get 
you have yourself some kind of education, get yourself a job, don't start your family until you get one or two done. Find yourself a faith and believe in it. Live yourself somewhat in a moral lifestyle. It doesn't mean you can't act like a fool sometime and have fun. It doesn't mean you can't kick somebody's ass if they encroach upon your property. But don't overdo it. Make some money. Save less than you make. It's not impossible. Save a little bit every week. Put it aside. Set it aside. Put it in a fund and don't touch it, even to go on vacation, even if electricity goes to And then do that every week, or every month, or every year. And then that money that you're setting aside is going to grow, 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 grow. And share yourself. Okay. So if you die, if you get hurt, if, if you have to go to the hospital, that your insurance will kick in, and so this money that you're setting aside won't. When you die, give it to your kids. Make sure they understand how to use it. And then you got everything that you claim that the white man has. Don't do that, then you're passing on a bad seed. But it's not impossible to do it. There's black folks who do it every day. And they, there's people who don't, you don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer to be worth whatever. And you don't have to be worth $20 million to have wealth. You know, but you have to work. You got to make a little bit of money. You got to stay employed. Or you have to find some kind of income, whether it's artistic expression. I know people who can, who can you know, you know, like what you're doing, you know, you're doing radio shows and, you know, you're, you're doing whatever, bring it, but that's an income, that's a job, you know, right. that's whatever you're doing, you know, um, do that consistently, do it consistently. Can't do it for a day, can't do it for a week, can't do it for a month. You got to do it consistently. It's got to be your lifestyle. You know, and people tell me all the time, oh, he's always working. Not always working, but I'm working as much as I need to. You got to you know, keep those wheels of rolling to keep that devil growing. Yeah, but, you know, but the thing is, is that I have a plan. You know, I'm working, money goes aside, I still got things that I want, money goes aside. At a certain point in time, that money will be able to take care of myself. To me, that's wealth. Because when your money can buy the same things that the guy who's working pays for, and it, it don't mean I'm taking advantage of that guy who didn't do it. It just means, if you, so in other words, I look at I look at myself, okay, so, so like my, my you know, make $150,000 a year down the truck. I work alongside people who make the same amount of money as me. I'm able to run a business. I'm able to run this career. I'm able to do these all these things. And this other guy next to me, he's in bankruptcy court. Mm. If he's white, right? It just happens just out of curiosity, you know, just coincidence or whatever. And it, it doesn't have anything to do with education. It has a lot to do with how you want to place yourself in the society. And so if you say, well, I can't do it, then you're not going to do it. You're not, you're not going to have anybody to try to dissuade you otherwise. It's just going to be one of those things. But if you say, I can do it, I just haven't done it yet, then you may spend a lifetime trying to do it. And you may not actually make it there. But if you if you develop a culture in your kids that where they can pick up where you left off, then you will make it. Now, that is the American way. It has nothing to do with white or black. Mm. And, you know, but I think that, obviously, in the civil rights era, before Jim Crow ended, or was at least outlawed, that it was it was more or less tough, not impossible, but tough to make it, you know. But I think now there's nothing in front of you, and there's no excuse other than the one that you want to conjure up. And again, I'm not going to argue against it. I'm just going to say, well, that's the reality of it, that's the reality of it, and your reality, that's it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassociate myself with that, because why should I associate myself with something that is in contrast, you know, at least, you know, you know for the greater whatever. Because I don't believe it, I know it is a possibility, you know. And again, you look at the Asian community; those folks are not victims. I mean, I'm talking about the Asian Americans. These people, these people are Americans. They are not victims. These people are not. Now, they may be victims of a crime, a random crime, or you know, individual crime. But these people are not crying about racism per se. These are people who score so high in the test on the SAT test that they get points taken away from them. These people are not. These people are not. Um, you know, they're, so they're, they're not. Why are they not allowed racism. to blossom? Why they? Why do you have to put the brakes on them when they score so high on the test? Okay. Why they're not allowed? We're talking, to... we're talking about they. Well, you know, you got to look at the whole concept of affirmative action. That's a whole different discussion. You know, that, but that goes back to racism. Why. That goes back to well, actually systematic yeah. racism, intrinsic right. in actual law or okay. ordinances produced by, you know, okay. either. Local, state, county, or national okay. judicial so there you go. or uh, legislative so, bodies. 
But but see, this is what I'm talking about. If we don't have these honest conversations, we're never going to progress. Whether you agree or disagree, it does not matter as long as you critically think on these topics. Right. Well, my thing is this. Not everything is racism. And in fact, I'll even go dare to say that we spend too much time talking about this shit sometimes without any real clear resolution. Why people don't walk up in the morning and talk about racism? They care. They can give a less. Well, about of course, it. if you benefit you know, from it, unless, why would you give Oh, come on now. Again, we're talking about the stuff as if to say that every white person is successful and every black person is unsuccessful. No, 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 that's no, not. But, but the thing yeah. is, if you look at the successful black people, examine them. If you want to be successful, mm-hmm. then you examine the, the, the good people. And, and, and you see one what, thing what, in what common. A small sombrero what behind they, every successful black person, right. there's a small sombrero. Okay, again, that's racist. And that right there is probably more insulting than any nigger word or any coon word or anything because that you're, you're negating the success of the person who made it. You're saying, well, he only made it because a white person. That is insulting because that implies that he can't do it on but his own. But is it not factual? It is not factual. How can you say it's factual when you don't know oh, what that person did? It's I mean, you can say, well, a person in America Dre, made it because Ignite, a person... Jay-Z. Well, I mean, this, okay, the list just goes on and on. Any, any of them. Okay. Any of them that have right, well, made it then. to that apex of what we consider right. successful. There is okay. a small sombrero right. pulling the purse, pulling the, the money okay. string. Well, I, I'm sad that you think that. That's too bad. If that's the way you feel, that's the way it is. I don't agree with that. You know, I and, think and that, right. you know, because it's, it's, that's, in, come on now, because again, you're, you're saying there's racism, but somehow or another, there's a racist society that's letting some people through and some people Absolutely. not. Absolutely. That's a, so I could have said it better so, so if myself. That's, if that's the case, if that's the case, why let any through? Because you have to give the illusion of hope. The fuck? You why why would yourself. you? If it's a racist society, why why not? And so, so if that's the case, then why even let a few win? To give the illusion of hope. No, then why, give, why the give an illusion? As why long give as you an illusion? Ball, why, why you'll give, get if they're racist, if they're racist, if they're truly racist, why give the illusion? Why worry about it? Because these you know? people are masters at their crafts. These it's people, not with brute right? force. Listen, the the Caesar of Rome wasn't the strongest man in the fucking universe. He wasn't. The 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 slavers who who packed the Colosseums full of gladiators that in essence were the stronger. They were there because. They lack knowledge. They were there. No, actually, they gladiators weren't necessarily the strongest. They were slaves. You know, they lost to the, to the in many cases to the Roman soldiers. You know, and they but they survived the, the battle. They survived the loss, and in that there is strength. Like the slaves Maybe. that survived the Middle Ages. If two, if two, if two, if two weak strength. people fight each other and one lives and one survives, that person who survives isn't necessarily the strongest. He's just stronger than the person that he killed. You know. But I see what you're saying. But, you know, okay, so so it, no black person is successful, not a white person letting them be successful. Okay. All right. So, you know, it'd be a terrible I thing mean, to tell your kids. The last that, time I know? checked, there's not that many black in financial institutions that can even give out business loans. So even when we talk about small black owner businesses, which on the average only has between one to okay. one employee. Let me ask you a question. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Do you think that they discriminate you on your on your on your um, on your application? Have you filled out an application recently where it asks you what your race is? And if not, because they don't ask that question on your application. If not, how the fuck do they know what race you are anyway? Are you not dealing with a loan officer? No, not online. Oh, you're, oh, not, you're you, talking you, about you, you don't have computer. To... Oh, okay. Well, because oh, your computer, computer already right, knows what you are. Okay, so, since so you're putting your social security number, okay, so, which you have to put in your social security number, it's already tied to your race. Let's say that you're in person then. Okay, let's say that you're in person. You, you, well, you, you think that that guy, you. you think that, that loan officer writes on there? <laughs> that was a nigger. <laughs> of course. Chad? He might oh, not no, write wait, nigger no, because please. he doesn't believe in the N-word. He oh, might okay. not write negro or All not right. applicable. Alright, so it's that's the case. And every, every black person is going to be rejected. Well, no, a few of them going to get it. Okay. Just because they're black, and because they're either they're they're we not all black people, but and you know you got that's a beautiful way of putting it. A lot of them will get it just because they're black, but they're the lo- the most irresponsible ones that will get it. Thus tying the into the impression that even if you give them money, they can't manage it. Right. Okay. Do you, you realize that the most successful 
businesses actually don't really need funding. At least Do you beginning. know who the richest black man in, this, in America right now? Uh, yeah, I do. I have a pretty good idea. Okay. Now, Mr. you Missouri. know that, that rich man got his wealth by actually catering to the majority population, thus making more sales. Okay. Well, the majority population is white. Either okay. way you well, look at it, even if they don't directly give you a loan, they have to directly give you their sales money for you to be a true success. Now, if you just cater to the black community, I hate to tell you, economically, you're at a disadvantage because the, the target audience is so damn small and, and so fragmented that you're probably not going to come up. But if you target your your stuff, your content to the vast majority of people, chances are, if they dig it and if it's good, you're going to come up. But once again, that goes back to you have to acquiesce to the dominant societies and norms and values thus in. That's all I'm saying. And if you don't recognize that, then you're very, very well destined to become an angry, frustrated, broke, melanated individual who may be rifle in your hatred or, or even frustration or whatever towards the majority society, but your voice is not going to be heard. And you're gonna okay. be irrelevant. So you say majority society, so why not just be why not just join the majority society then? Well, if we're talking about definitions. They probably won't let you, right? That's that's what it is. They probably won't let you well, join, well, right? Yeah, that would be the, the right. key factor. Okay, yeah. so by not letting you join, they probably won't let you live among them, they probably won't let you get a job there, they probably won't let you save money or whatever, because after all, they, somebody will be sitting on the desk somewhere saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, it says here that you're black, and you're a minority, so therefore, we're going to let you, we're, we're not going to let you in, right? I would hope that not to be the case, but... Um, so what would stop you? You can't prove it. You, there's no way to, you know, if I went to your, let's say that, that you had a factory, and I went to your factory, and, and you, for whatever reason personally hire everyone that goes through, right? You don't have an HR, it's just you personally, and you're an old, fat, white man, okay? And I come into there, and you're like, okay, you know, uh, I looked at you, you know, you don't look like what I'm looking for, next, and then some blibbing idiot, well, I passed the sixth grade, sir, okay, I want you. How could I really prove that it was discrimination that I did not get that job, and this, you know, buffoon did? Okay. Well, you know, I mean, you can come up with a hypothetical. You know what a straw man argument is? Oh. A straw man argument is when you when you conjure up something, whether it's true or not true, but you can't prove it. And then because you conjured it up, you look at it and say, well, there it is. Now disprove it. But wait a minute. You, it's, it's a hypothetical. How can but I That's what the atheists or... use against believers. That's what the atheists <laughs> use against the, the reality again, that God exists. But again, we're talking about a hypothetical. Right? We're talking about something that may or may not do based on your supposition. We're not even talking about something that actually happened to you personally. We're just saying something that could have happened or it looks like it's possible, but we're just we're just coming up with something, just throwing it out there. And then you're saying, well, prove it or disprove it. I'm saying, well, it's a hypothetical. I, I can't prove it or disprove it. I'm just saying that if you are alive in 2020 and if you're, if you, whatever you want, what do you want? You want wealth? I mean, you're talking about Bill, Bill, you know, Bill Gates or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about do you do you want to, you know, do you want to be reasonably successful financially? Do you want do you want a retirement, which is what we should aspire for, right? Cool. You know, do you want to be because you're going to oh, you're going to get old, you're going to die, and then you're going to die. You know, you're going to get old and then you're going to die. But you know what we should be aspiring aspiring for is the reality of being able to feed yourself, being able to pay for yourself. Been able not to have to rely on somebody to send you something in the mail every month, you know, and um, what you're, you know, basically short, have what the you're saying, we all should be aspiring to be economically viable. Meaning, to I be, mean, you call it what you want to, right? Correct. But I, I'm just saying, if that's the thing, and you said, well, I can't do that because they won't let me in the club. I'm saying, first of all, I disagree with that because there's too many people doing that right now. You know, there's too many people who have done it. So you're or saying the, be, the the vast majority of black people are actually in the club, and they. I don't, don't know the know. vast. I don't know the vast majority. 
I don't know what the vast majority is. I'm just saying that there are people who are doing it, who've done it, and who seem to be able to do it. And you look at them and you say, well, okay, the people that I know who have done it, who are doing it, what are they doing? Or what are they not doing? Mm. You know, what are the characteristics of the people who, who make it? And what are the characteristics of the people who definitely are not making it? And how can you draw your parallels between the, the two groups enough to make your, 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 your assessment? You know, no, you don't have to have a doctorate degree. You don't have to be an attorney. It's good if you are. You probably will make it then. You know, but, you know, you, you know, just the normal stuff. You know, you don't, don't, you know, don't crack out. Don't, you know, don't, uh, don't have a, what do you call it? The, um, like a criminal mentality, right? Right. I am not saying you're going to go to jail, but I'm saying you're probably more likely to go to jail. I don't, when a cop gets behind me, I don't worry. I'm not worried. You know, and I, I, maybe I'm speeding. Maybe I might get a ticket. Maybe I didn't stop for the stop sign, whatever. But I'm not, I'm not worried about getting pulled out, you know. Um, no, 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 that's good. That. My, my kids aren't worried about that, you no, know. I'm not worried to. about getting, you know, uh, broken into no, no differently than anybody else, <laughs> you know. We're actually out of time. Uh, we're over at, we normally do like an hour. I try to do oh, like okay. about an hour. So we're at an hour, 11 minutes. Yeah. At this time, I want to say thank you, you know, for giving us our time, you know, because that's all we basically have on the surface time. And, yeah. um, you know, just a few moments, uh, anything in closing you want, we would like to share with the audience before we close out. Just don't give up, you know, just keep on moving and, you know, just stay positive during this, um, lockdown, and, you know, be prepared to come out swinging. There it is. Well, thank you, Mr. Trucker. Uh, this yep. will conclude TPIM SR Live for today. I ask you live your life of integrity without hate, envy, and greed. And as always, brothers and sisters, please, 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 let's try to be kinder to each other. Peace in our power, unity in our victory, and dignity in our respect. Liberation, I'm out.